Obviously, everybody in Chicago, <sighs> big deep breaths, consistently looking to see what's going on with Derrick Rose right now. What's the story with Rose at this point? Well, you know, he's still battling a nagging, nagging groin injury, and it's, it's kept him out for seven straight games. And it, would, it would be a bigger deal in Chicago if the Bulls were floundering, but they've done extremely well without him. They're 5-2 and two over this current stretch, and he's missed 17 total games of the season with, with various injuries, and they're 12-5 and five without him. I mean, they're, they've clinched the division or, or at least the playoff spot. They're looking good. I mean, they're the first team in the NBA to 40 wins. So, you know, the team has done a very good job of managing him um, and, 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 and performing well without him. But, again, there's still real no timetable for his return, which, you know, when you hear a guy potentially not be day-to-day but week-to-week, it's, it's a big concern for fantasy owners, particularly those that are entering the, the, the home stretch and have fantasy playoffs starting either this week or next. I was going to say, obviously, their play, <clears throat> excuse me, the fantasy playoffs starting off this week or next. That, that's what everybody's kind of really looking toward. But let's kind of play, you know, the, the reality of it all is come playoff time, obviously, they're going to be able to get it done in the regular season, the Chicago Bulls. But come playoff time, they're going up against very good teams. Now, one thing to really note about this, though, with a guy like Derrick Rose and a groin injury, that's one of those things that's just nagging. And they keep plugging at you, right? Yeah, it's extremely problematic for a guy like Rose, who's a guard so dependent on his lateral quickness, because that's really what the groin affects, is it's your lateral movement. The groin is a muscle group known as the adductors, which helps move your muscles towards your midline, and and so you need them for that quick lateral movement, like blowing past the defender that makes Rose so deadly. But but and if he's limited, it's going to be a major issue for him. So they're really going to focus on getting him healthy. You know, I think maybe they'd rush him back a little bit more if they weren't winning. But the fact that he he you know that they're Locked up into the playoffs, they're going to likely be a top four seed. Have home court. They're not going to. They're not going to run the risk of missing having him miss any time for the playoffs. So they're going to let him heal. Um, I expect him to be back for at least the last week, maybe two weeks of the regular season, just to get a good feel for things and be and try to be completely healthy for the playoffs. Okay, so let's go back to the kind of the timetable a little bit right now for the fantasy owners out there. What do we should be looking at? Is is he a guy that we kind of be a little hesitant on or what? Well, I mean, if you are scratching and clawing. To, for a playoff spot in your in your league, I think you kind of have to look at dropping him. I know it's not something that's a really popular idea, being that he's the reigning MVP. But if he's a guy sitting on your bench, not giving you any production, you have to look elsewhere. Of course, this isn't head to head rotisserie. I think you can afford to wait him out. But in head to head leagues, you, you've got to have somebody out there playing. Um, you know, his, his backup CJ Watson and, and John Lucas have done well. Um, they're they're worth taking a look at. Now, if you've locked into a playoff spot, I think it's worth at least waiting to see if he's going to be available, especially if you have a buy in that first round.